Well, the attacks on 9-11 have certainly left an indelible mark on America's landscape and on the hearts and the minds of its people. And take a look at this new poll. It shows an overwhelming majority of Americans, they think that 9-11 has had the biggest effect on America in the past 50 years. That's more than the Vietnam War, the collapse of communism, the Kennedy assassination, and the Watergate scandal combined. Joining me now, KT McFarland, a Fox News national security analyst and host of Fox News Live's Def Con. On three, Deneen Borelli, a Project 21 fellow, daily caller columnist and Fox News contributor, and Judy Miller is a Pulitzer Prize winning investigative reporter, author, and Fox News contributor. Thank you all for joining us on this very special weekend. So let's begin with each one of you. KT, I'll start with you. You know, your experience and how 9 11 affect you, affected you. Well, I had retired from government. Mm -hmm. I was a Cold Warrior. I've been in the Nixon and Ford and Reagan administrations. We won the Cold War. I was a stay at home mom. September 11th with five kids and I dropped my children off at school. I went down to Lower Manhattan. I saw the I saw the tower catch on fire. I saw the second plane hit and I went spent the whole day trying to find my children. And for me, it was it was an idea that I didn't want to feel helpless and I didn't want my kids to feel helpless. So I got my children, my daughters made cookies. I took 10 of her friends home cuz they couldn't get home. Um, her, their teacher's husband died. He was in the Twin Towers. So we made cookies and took them to the police and fire department. So it inspired you to do something, then it and inspired you. And then I got you. back yes. to work. And yes. then I decided, <laughs> look, if they're killing my, our kids and bombing my cities, I'm getting back into the game. And so we're I glad got, you did. Well, thank you. Because we have you here at Fox. <laughs> thank Denine, you. what about you? Well, my thoughts and prayers go out to all family members who are affected by this, uh, this horrible tragedy. I was on the streets of Manhattan that day. I worked uh, near Grand Central Station right across the street. And the floor I was on, there was an office window where I could see the tower on the right. So I didn't just see it on television. I watched outside that window. Yeah. And, you know, of course, never forget it. But you know, at first it was just a hole in the building. And then as time went on, the flames, and I actually saw it pancake down. So uh -huh. uh, this was just really, really something that uh, I hope we never experience again. I'll, I'll never forget it. Uh, I did manage to call my family to let them know that, you know, I was okay. And then after that, the phones went out. Mm -hmm. So, you know, really didn't have much contact, but uh, just had to hunker down and just wait until I could get home. Yeah. It took it and took many hours. And Judy, you know, well, your reaction? Uh, it's obviously a seminal moment mm -hmm. for America, and it was a very important moment for me. I was downtown near the World Trade Center voting, or trying to vote, when I looked up and saw that we'd been hit. And uh, I had, only eight months earlier, written a long series of articles about Al-Qaeda and the threat that it posed to us and this man in this faraway place named Osama bin Laden. Mm -hmm. And I thought as much as I had done, why hadn't I tried harder? Why hadn't we all worked yeah. harder to prevent this terrible day? Yeah. Well, that actually takes us to our next poll, another uh, poll, a Fox News poll. More Americans, though, they think that the U.S. is safer than it was before 9-11. That is good news. That number is actually higher than last year, slightly, but lower than it was back in 2004. So, Judy, I'll begin with you this time. Why, why do you think the discrepancy there? Well, I think that as people understand that the threat itself has metastasized, it's spread like a virus, mm -hmm. that you can't be 100% safe. That what we have to concentrate now is not only preventing the next attack, but when and if it occurs, to remain resilient and to snap back as we have this time. And I think as that realization sits in, People have to readjust themselves and readjust our thinking about what we do about a threat like yeah, this. It's amazing mm -hmm. today around New York City yes. to see the level um, mm -hmm. that has been increased in terms of security. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have armed police officers on every corner. We have the subways being patrolled. We have, mm -hmm. you know, the random yeah. stopping all the mm -hmm. trucks and searching them. And, and it really is a little disconcerting, but at the same time, it does <laughs> make you feel safer, <laughs> right? But, you know, I think this is the see something, say something. We have all been trained to do that. Yes. And there are now 8 million eyes in New York City looking for three terrorists. Mm -hmm. And so to me, it's, it's the idea that we are now all involved. Mm -hmm. We all can do something. Yeah. And a shout, out to the, a shout out to the New York Police Absolutely. Department, which is out there 24-7 <laughs> and they has are. been for this week. I never realized how many there are of them. <laughs> 50,000 wow. of them. <laughs> and you're not seeing everything. <laughs> exactly. But there are even more behind the scenes. And let's mm -hmm. take a look at this other poll, uh, another Fox News poll. A majority of Americans saying, in terms of the security, that increased security measures, specifically at airports, after 
after September 11th are appropriate. Just 22% think the government is overreacting, with 11% saying authorities have not gone far enough. So, Deneen, your thoughts on that? I think there is a bit of an overreaction. There's no need to search grandmothers. There's no need to frisk little kids. I mean, come on. But I really think it should be privatized. The airlines are the ones that should be at handling the, uh, the security measures and not the TSA. I think they it should be privatized, mm -hmm. and they could do a much better job. I, I think we've been safe. Nothing's happened. <laughs> KT, uh, you know, I think might agree with me. This is a federal obligation and responsibility. These terrorists have evolved. They've gone from shoe bombs to body bombs, mm -hmm. liquids. Every time we think of something, they think of something yeah, else. But you, there are involved. instances yeah. where they have gotten weapons on planes. I mean, it, whenever it comes down mm -hmm. in the news, we don't always know when this happens, but I have heard of situations where they have gotten weapons on board. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I think that we're often, it's like they say, generals always fight the last war. If you go through a security line now, it's like an archaeological dig through every terrorist attempt and plot. You know, the shoes, the you know, the sharp snowballs. Animals, you can't the take snowballs a lipstick, down. Man. You can't take a snowball through. But hmm. I think that yeah. what, <laughs> they have signs up. No snowballs? Yes, yeah, no snowballs. <laughs> because they melt by the time I, they get on the I don't know. No, not actual <laughs> the snowballs. The, the <laughs> snow globes. Oh, snow I should globes. say. Snow very dangerous snow weapons. <laughs> no, but I do think that we are probably devoting too much attention to political correctness. I think that we need to re sort of reallocate our resources, not reduce them, but reallocate them so that you don't focus on granny or on little kids. Yeah. Focus on the people who have behavior characteristics of terrorists. Definitely a part of the conversation as we reflect back on 9-11 10 years ago mm. tomorrow. Well,